Hey YouTube, Captain Mark here from King's Landing Sport Fishing with today's how-to video, how to tie a meat rig or a cut bait rig. You may have had uh, an old rig that they've got broken off and you've still got the heads or the line was frayed or you might have bought a bunch of uh, meat heads in bulk but now you need to tie those up. This video is going to help you out. It's going to show you two different methods to use to tie a meat head. This video is tying what they call a clean or a naked meat rig. There are no Twinkie flies, no squids on this particular rig. I will do another video at a later date, so keep checking back to my channel that will show you how to tie a Twinkie rig, but that's not today's video. Now, before we get started though, I do have a favor to ask from you. As an amateur YouTube producer, I really do appreciate it if you can click the like button and the subscribe button. It helps me out tremendously. So with that, let's get started. So what do we need? First of all, we need some bait heads. Like I said, I'm now starting to use the hot fish bait heads. They were new in the summer of 2020. They're a fantastic bait head. You know, you can use a, a Reese Davis, Diabolical, Dreamweaver, John King. There's lots of different product out there. I'm a huge fan of these new hot fish heads. This is particular one is one of my customs. It's a carbon 14 with carbon fiber on the front with a glow eye and crushed glow on the back. Fantastic head for me. I use this early morning or in low light situations with cloud cover. So first of all, you need your bait head. Next, you need some swivels. You can either use a six ball swivel or a high quality ball bearing swivel. You need some hooks. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to show you two different methods. The first method I'm going to show you is super quick and easy using an, a number one or a number two treble. And the second method is going to be using two four aught octopus hooks. I'm on Lake Ontario. We do not need to pinch our barbs. If you're on the west coast in Vancouver or Vancouver Island, you'll probably need to pinch your barbs uh, to make sure you stay within your regulations. You also need one of the most important items, fluorocarbon. I use a quality Seaguar, 40 pound or 30 pound for fluorocarbon. 30 or 40 works great. Early season, I start with a 30 pound and as those those king or chinook salmon get larger, I will bump it up to 40 pound as they get larger and they start getting those uh, those big fat teeth. And then the last piece you need is some tube. This is, I think it's three or four millimeter um, inside diameter, just plastic tubing. And I'll show you why I use this in a moment. I picked this up at the hardware store, by the way. So with that, let's get started. So in the interest of time, what I've done is I've started out with a piece of fluorocarbon here with my number one treble hook. And what I've done is I've tied a uni knot. You can use any knot that you like here to tie you know, your hook to your fluorocarbon line. I'm a big fan of the uni knot. So now that I've got the hook tied on here, this is the quick method that I use using a treble. Take your piece of tubing, slide the tubing over the fishing line, and all the way down to your hook. Now what you want to do is you want to actually slide it over the top of the hook. By doing that, you've now actually protected the knot from that salmon's big teeth. And you've protected a lot of the line here from the teeth of the salmon. Now, some people will use a whole bunch of different beads here. Glow beads, red beads, green beads, yellow beads, you know, there's all different colors of beads. And don't get me wrong, sometimes I do that too. But I prefer this method because this tubing protects the line. It protects the line from the fish's teeth and you'll have far less break-offs. When you're running the beads, the teeth can get in between and cut off the line. So that's the first reason I like the tubing. So now, we're going to take our bait head. Oh, well, before I forget, piece of fluorocarbon I've got here. I usually start off with about eight, eight and a half feet uh, of fluorocarbon. I find in this particular case I lose anywhere from six to twelve inches of line just doing all my knots. So now I've, I've threaded that bait head on starting with the back up through the front and now I have the bait head with the tube with the hook. Now if I go to the other end, I do need to tie on a swivel of some sort, like I said, a six ball or a high quality stainless steel 
high quality stainless steel ball bearing like so works just fine you know it's a personal preference I'm not a big fan of barrel swivels so I don't use those here I'm all about the stainless steel ball bearing or the six ball I use the uni knot for most of my knots here so I'm tying a uni knot at the end here make sure I lubricate and cinch it down cut off my tag end and that rig is technically done now I've tied this rig to use behind a large flasher like this 11 inch glow herring aid I have here from Gibbs Delta it's one of my favorite flashers that I would use right out of the store and uh, this uh, this black and glow head works really great with this it's got some black on it and it's got a lot of glow and works really really well now let's just clip that on the flasher here so we're basically ready to the fish we just need to add our bait now it's winter here right now I don't have any cut bait uh, cut but I do have one of these Baytrix you know rubber cut baits and allow me to demo it for you so that's where I'm going to take the bait I'm going to slide that in the head take my trusty toothpick and slide that through and there you go now a couple of things I do first of all once I've broken off the toothpick I now want to make sure I have the right length you'll notice that in this particular case what I've done with that clear tubing is I've got about two two and a half inches of tubing the reasoning being is by running that tubing it actually sets it up beautifully so that the hook is right at the end of the meat strip component but let's say you are running a shorter piece of meat all you do here is you slide the tubing down more and now you're set up for a smaller piece of meat it makes it adjustable and that's one of the reasons I really do like running the running the tubing now some folks will just run it like that won't even bother pinching the end with a toothpick myself I still like to put a toothpick in there I take the end that I broke off here you can see I jam it in there cut off the end with my snips and now cinch in my uh, cinch back that tubing cut off and now we're ready to fish like a hungry salmon will love that that is one of the quickest and easiest ways that I will fish meat rigs or cut bait on the Great Lakes and like I said this is using a hot fish so that's method number one now my second method is going to take me a little bit longer to do but I'm going to tell you on the King's Landing sport fishing uh, charter boat this is the method that I use 99% of the time myself personally I'm not a big fan of treble hooks I like the octopus hook and I use two of these so what I've got here is another eight and a half foot piece of fluorocarbon and I've tied on my first octopus hook what I use here is a bait loop knot and I'll put a description of the bait loop knot in the comments with a link to a page that unslash a video that shows you how to tie the bait loop knot so now I've got my first hook on now you'll notice I have a couple of smaller pieces of tubing again some people here they may use beads I personally don't use the beads I like to use the tubing because the tubing protects my fishing line I don't need to tell you guys you guys all fish for Kings or Chinook salmon they've got some real sharp teeth and you let them near the fishing line they will they will shred our fishing line so what I do is I first I slide the first piece of tubing on and I slide it over the nut and I start by sliding it almost all the way down now I take my second hook and I'm gonna slide that through the eye and I slide it down Personally, I like to leave 
about an inch between the two, no more than an inch. And then I'm going to tie another bait loop knot. So in this case, I'm going to wrap it six times around the hook, six or seven, doesn't really matter. Then I'm going to take the other end, put that through the eye, and I'm going to wrap it another six or seven times. There we go. Got to lubricate up the line. And I'm going to slowly pull it through. Unfortunately, this part is a little messy, but I tell you, it is well, well, well worth it. This is a far more effective method, in my personal opinion, than using the trebles. And cinch that down. So now I've got my two hooks. So now, the first thing I do is I take my tubing, and I pull that back. And you'll see I pulled that back so it's covering the, uh, the head. Now I'm going to take my second piece of tubing, and I'm going to slide that on the fishing line here. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to slide that down to where it meets the first piece of tube. What you'll see here is I have protected the fishing line a great deal from those big king's teeth. This helps you tremendously. Now I need to add a bait head. So in this particular case, I've got this chartreuse uh, bait head here with green dots on a globe blade. I'm going to slide this on here. This is one of Hot Fish's factory colors. And there you go, bait head slid on. In this particular case, just so it's different from that last rig I tied up for you, I'm going to use the six ball swivel here today. Similarly, I'm going to use a uni knot at the end. So I'll tie that uni knot on. Snip my tag ends. And that rig is basically the ready to go. Now, let me just show you why I like this particular one. So I've got my, uh, my fake meat strip here. By the way, I am going to do a video shortly on how to actually uh, cut your own meat strips. So check back to the channel later. But uh, for this video, I just wanted to show you with the fake meat strip. So I run that through. I've snipped off my toothpick. There you go. Snip it off on both sides. And that is ready to fish. And in this particular case, I like to have the hooks just at the end of the tail. So this is where I can adjust those the tubing so that the hooks are right at the end of the tail, like that. I find that it camouflages the hooks with the, uh, the end of the meat rig. Now, why do I like this rig versus the, uh, the treble? A couple of things. I find a lot of the time when the salmon take the bait, they actually come in from the side. And why I like this rig with the two forward octopus hooks is typically what will happen is when they come in from the side, one hook goes in their mouth and the other hook goes under their chin. And it's deadly. You get two hooks in the salmon's mouth and after that, one, they can thrash around and they pretty much stay locked in their mouth. Unfortunately, with the treble, I find if they're coming from the side, you don't get a great hook set and you've got a much higher propensity for that fish to get break loose or come unstuck. And that's not good. We don't want to lose those salmon when we get them. So that's how I tie uh, these bait heads. Like I said, I'm using the new hot fish bait heads. They're fantastic. You know, what I am going to do now is I'm going to actually pop up a little video here that will show you the role of the, the, of the hot fish. 
You can see it's got a fantastic roll right out of the package. That's what makes the hot fish really awesome. You know, a lot of the bait heads you buy, you're constantly having to bend them and tune them. The hot fish you do not. They come with a nice curve right from factory, ready to go. It's basically add your meat and start fishing. So it's really, really fantastic new product. I'm a big fan. I use these all of 2020 and caught some serious kings. You know, here's a few pictures of some of the kings that we caught, either myself or Tony from Hotfish, using these uh, using these bait heads. Great, great product. So with that, YouTube, hopefully you liked this video. If you did, like I said, please subscribe and like this video. And we'll see you in the water in 2021. Have a great day.